When you think of the world's most powerful reptile, you probably think of this, Australia. Wild, remote, and dangerous. But what if I told you the real heart of crocodile territory, the deadliest hotspot on the planet, isn't here at all. It's in Southeast Asia. This is a story of a forgotten population. In the rivers of Malaysia and Singapore, they're making a comeback in our own backyards. In Indonesia, they claim more human lives than anywhere else on Earth. But here's the twist. They are vital ecosystem engineers. And in many places, people have found a way to live alongside them. So how can the world's deadliest crocodile also be a sign of a healthy planet? Stick around, because this story is wilder than you imagine. I mean, you know, people are entitled to their sexual proclivities. You know, I mean, let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. You know, but I ain't spending any time on it, because in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. Bob Catter would have you believe that Australia is overrun with crocodiles and it's the epicenter of croc attacks in the world. To really understand the scale of this story, our first stop needs to be Indonesia. Forget the statistics you know. While Australia, with its global reputation, averages around one fatal croc attack per year, some regions in Indonesia report dozens. We're talking about a level of human crocodile conflict that is completely unmatched anywhere in the world. But why? It's not because the crocodiles are inherently more aggressive in Indonesia. It's more that it's a perfect storm. As Indonesia's population has grown, communities have pushed deeper into the crocodile's historic territory. Palm oil plantations and illegal mining have fragmented their habitats forcing these ancient reptiles into closer and more frequent contact with people who rely on those same rivers to live. In many communities, this relationship is complex. The crocodile is a deep creature of cultural significance, sometimes seen as an ancestor or a spirit. But when resources are scarce and a thousand kilo predator is competing for your waterway, reverence can quickly turn to fear and conflict. From the flashpoint of Indonesia, we move to a different kind of encounter. You might expect crocodiles in the remote jungles of Malaysia's Borneo, but what about the waterways of the major cities of Kuala Lumpur or the reservoirs of hypermodern Singapore? Yes, they're here. Saltwater crocodiles, the same giant species found in Australia and Indonesia, are incredibly adaptable survivors. In Malaysia, as particularly Kuala Lumpur, populations are rebounding and sightings in rivers, once thought empty, are becoming much more common. Here, in one of the most densely populated countries in the world, crocodiles are thriving. This is Singapore. Singapore's approach is to make sure that crocodiles are tracked, monitored, and the public is made aware of their presence all throughout the country, including quarries like behind me here. But not every story is about conflict or surprise. Some are about hope. For decades, the Siamese crocodile was considered functionally extinct in the wild in Thailand, hunted relentlessly for its soft belly skin to make luxury handbags. It vanished from the country's lakes and rivers. But then, something incredible happened. Through dedicated captive breeding programs and immense conservation efforts, they were reintroduced. Today, against all odds, small populations are once again breeding in the wild. Our final stop takes us to the Philippines home to a crocodile you've probably never heard of. This isn't the giant, globe-trotting saltwater crocodile. Meet Crocodilus mindarensis, the Philippine crocodile, the rarest crocodile in the entire world. Critically endangered, with possibly fewer than 250 adults left in the wild, this species is on the absolute brink. It prefers freshwater swamps, putting it in direct conflict with the needs of the local communities. It's threatened by habitat loss and destructive fishing practices. The fight to save the Philippine crocodile is a race against time, a last stand for a unique species of our planet's natural heritage. So we've seen the danger, we've seen the conflict, we've seen the conservation and the fight for survival of these species. But what makes them so special in Southeast Asia? Why are they so important? The truth is, crocodiles are not villains, they're architects. As apex predators, crocodiles help keep a healthy ecosystem from the top down. 
They prey on sick and weak animals, preventing the spread of disease. They control populations of invasive fish that might otherwise decimate native species. Their abandoned nests create nutrient-rich hotspots for plants to grow. They are living, breathing indicator of a thriving ecosystem. Simply put, where you find healthy crocodiles, you'll find healthy wilderness. From the deadly rivers of Indonesia to the protective reserves of Thailand, the story of Asia's crocodiles is one of incredible complexity. They are not monsters lurking in the shadows, but essential parts of a world we are increasingly sharing. The path forward isn't to fear them, but to understand them, to respect their power and to give them their space. The forgotten giants of Asia are a powerful reminder that our world is still profoundly wild. Thanks for watching. If you found this story as fascinating as I do, hit the subscribe button for more deep dives into our crocodile planet. And I have to ask, have you ever seen a crocodile in an unexpected place? Share your story in the comments below.